mic check, one, two, one, two uh, I represent, this is what I do To any beat, any way, I'ma give it to you Best beware, open your ears to the truth as I push I'm the man, I list the plan, fool Any best that I kick is for your mind, fool I'm a pimp, so I'll be up in your mind, frame Don't be a lame, boy, Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, what's up? What's going on? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Happy breakfast, 11 C's, lunch, supper, dinner, midnight snacks. How are you doing? So yes, we are finally back to our Q&A show on KRS channel with a bit more of a funky twist. Because um, then you know I kind of got this funky light thing going in my studio. As you know, it wasn't there last year. Because when KRS does a show, no matter where it is, it's going to be at the most creative and the most funkiest self that I can live up to, okay? And anytime I do something, I wanna make it the best. And finally, I had the funds to buy, first of all, a wide angle lens for my camera that I needed for a long time. And I finally got the lights that can make this even more better. And then I have a monitor coming. So there will be a second monitor here so I can see what's going on and everything and control my audio level from here as well. So, yeah, uh, um, after paying my taxes and all that, so, you know, I finally had some money left and I can do this that I've been waiting to do for two, three months, four months now. But, you know, as having a baby and a family now, oh, my God, man, expenses just go up and up. So, yeah, man. If you haven't gotten my full astrological report in my books, you better get that here, Sonny, because I'm going to need that. So you better get that, all right? Anyway, so as, as I just want to say that, you know, when I want to do something, I want to do it best of my ability. I don't want to do just sit in front of the camera and just doing and talking with the astrology. You know, this is, this is me. This is KRS. When I do something as divine as Vedic Astrology, you're going to get it the coolest and the most funkiest way ever. All right. So, yeah, this Astrology can Kara show is back, but it's going to be bi-weekly. It's not going to be weekly yet because remember, I have a second full-time job, which is fatherhood. And that thing takes all of my day now. I'm even like running behind some of my other online work and all of that. And it's you know, just... Um, Gotta apologize. It's just I know on my I used to make videos every day, Monday through Friday. But now it's like three times a week. But hopefully I can get in the groove soon. Cause I can find I finally found the time and schedule where I could do this too. So you know, so let's get started with our QA and some other stuff and then let's roll the show. Alright, so and by the way, if you notice that picture in the back of uh, me burning a chart and the cigar and this cool uh, little picture of mine. These are the two most hated pictures in the world of Vedic astrology and this is why I'm bringing it on my show. Like people are like, oh my God, you are destroying my religion. You are insulting my religion. And Vedas and Vedic astrology is not even a religion. It is supposed to be a free belief system. And so when I get brains on my following me with this size versus this size. This size does not know what artistry is, what being innovative is, what being different and yourself is versus somebody with this size of a brain who understand this guy is not a bullshitter. This guy says he drinks, he eats meat, he loves sex, he smokes cigars here and there, and he does Vedic astrology. And what's wrong with that? And that's what I'll tell you. This is why I love this country. Because this country lets you be who you are. But you know what? I got to tell you something. I am not Ravi Shankar. I'm Jimi Hendrix. So when you come in my studio, and when I'm in my zone, and when I'm in my element, I am who I am. It don't matter if I'm smoking something, burning something. There's an artistic spirit behind it. Artistic soul behind it. So... Yeah, just, just here it is. Thanks for watching. Did I piss you off? Maybe I'll get a drink too in this show. I do need a drink. I'm telling you, if you do what I do from day to night, knowing that you have an infant with you all day long here in this chair, and I'm here in my mouse doing things, 
you can't do what I do. If you do not have kids, you do not know what I'm talking about. And once I sit down, relax in this room at this time when I'm filming the, filming this show, it is a command from the universe for me to have a drink. Ooh, burn him, stone him to death. Come on. All right, so jokes aside, um, let's do some q and a. No, I'm not drunk, okay? I want to get drunk. I'm not drunk. This is just me. I'm just happy that I'm back being this show. I love this show. So, uh, first one is from Anil uh, Belkud. Hi, Keras. Oh, Yash, your hair. I'm like eating your hair while I'm working, bro. What's up with that? You're sleeping right there, man. Oh, my God. Are you doing a podcast show that I know, don't know of? Like uh, the Doggy World show? Hey, guys. Today, I'm going to show you the wisdom of life. The more cookies you eat and the more toys you chew, the better the life is. That's probably he's doing. That's why his hair is on this show, on this uh, mic. So you were asking me, Anil, hi, Karis, if a female horoscope uh, Sagittarius ascendant, seventh house in Gemini, sitting there, Mercury with Jupiter and Sun, and going through Jupiter Mahadasha, please give your analysis. Okay, well, here's my analysis. You're probably asking me the time of your marriage. And obviously, as you know, time of marriage not only requires the analysis of the seventh house, it requires the analysis of Dharakarka and Charadasha, and the seventh house and the first house axis in the Mansha. And um, just from what you're telling me, your marriage will definitely happen in Jupiter Mahadasha. Because first of all, Jupiter is a significator of husband for a female. So he's becoming active. The husband is becoming active. Jupiter is conjunct Mercury. I don't know the degrees of Mercury, but Jupiter is conjunct Mercury. He's conjunct the seventh house Lord. That means this conjunction is saying that there's something significant regarding the seventh house could happen between Jupiter Mahadasha and Mercury Antradasha. Then Sun is the ninth house Lord sitting in the seventh house. Sun is the Bhagya house Lord. Ninth house, your luck. Ninth house is also your marriage. Why? Why besides seventh house, ninth house is a uh, marriage as well? Because... Guess what Namansha is? Namansha chart, the divisional chart, is regarding your marriage. Namansha chart is a ninth harmonic chart, meaning that you rip open the ninth house and see what the hell's going on. Is the person going to follow his spiritual path all throughout life? Is the person going to meet the person that they're supposed to meet and get a positive transformation? All of this is Namansha chart, the ninth house. So now your Jupiter and Mercury are also conjunct the ninth house lord. So shows a very strong authoritative husband who's going to be either in finance, accounting, or in a government position like a lawyer. And your husband will be very communicative with you, will have extremely high morals. And many might say, oh, Jupiter in the seventh house gives failed marriages. Well, I have seen many cases where people had Jupiter in the seventh house lived a happy life. See, many articles, many people and astrologer will give you this analysis based on one planet and one house. I've had people say, Rahu in the seventh house is completely ruins the marriage house. Ketu in the seventh house ruins the marriage house. Where if you do not look at the six, seven things that you need to analyze to see how successful marriage will be, you are completely destroying the ethics of Vedic astrology. So might as well let me smoke a cigar and let me show you this stuff Instead of you just proclaiming from one position that the marriage is going to be failed. So here, marriage is not going to be a failure. Okay. So, um, but in, store, in, in in terms of timing, you're going to have to see the, the Mahadasha, Antradasha, Pariyantradasha, Dharakarka, and the Charadasha that you're going through. You want to also see the position of the seventh house, uh, uh, planets in the seventh house in the Mancha chart. You also want to see the transits of Jupiter and Saturn. They bring marriage and right now is actually a very good time for the marriage to happen because Jupiter and Saturn are quite, you know, um, promising that. Um, but also you want to um, check for the transits of Venus as well in this. And I'll get to all of this with all of these things. OK, like 
where does and why does the timing take place but also remember to look from the moon position as well the alternative ascendance that Juan Paul Manley came and taught on my channel so go look that look at that video the uh, next one is from Sutar Samodhi um, what's the tax rate like in the US for business people well if you're in California um, you're gonna be paying a lot of high taxes even as a corporation even as a business you go to somewhere like Arkansas, Oklahoma, or Midwest, you're going to be paying the lowest amount of taxes. California is just the highest tax rate that will just get you like a fist up there. Wow! Like the governor will say, I love California. It is the most beautiful place, but it has the highest tax rate. Everybody get a chopper. Okay, so the next one is from uh, Amol Thakur. I'm an Aries ascendant with Ketu uh, in the first house and Scorpio moon, uh, moon sign, and have Mercury, Jupiter, and Rahu in the seventh house. And distance between Rahu, Jupiter, and Venus is about one degree in Swati Nakshatra. What will uh, be the result? Okay, so you already saw what I told about Jupiter in this. Now, first thing this shows me that your marriage will be with a foreign partner, somebody from a foreign religion, foreign background. Or the marriage will take place in foreign lands. Second, what I see due to the Guru Chandal Yoga, that the marriage will not be a normal marriage. There, there will be, it won't be a moral standard marriage according to the society. You might get married in a court. You might get married from running away. You might get married in a uh, foreign land. You might get married suddenly. Perhaps you got the girl pregnant and you suddenly have to get married. So all of these things are seen from these kind of conjunction. But Venus and Rahu are best friends. And them being the best friends, Rahu will not damage Venus. Rahu is saying, I want to experience more love. You're, it shows me you're very obsessed about relationships. Whenever you get in a relationship, you're just completely into that person. Okay. But it also shows that there are moral standards there too. Your spouse will have moral standards. This is not a bad position if you really look at it. It is not because of the fact Venus is in Moltrakon sign. Swati Nakshatra of her own friend Rahu. So Venus is very independent and free-flowing. You're not the one to get tied down with these arranged marriages type scenario. You want a mad, you know, completely insane love. If you can't have that, you will not get married. And that's what you're looking for. Next one is from Rossar. I have... Sun, Mars, Mercury in the seventh house for man. Look at these seventh house questions that I just picked. My goodness, I have Sun, Mars, Mercury in the seventh house, Virgo, with Virgo in the ninth, with Venus in the ninth house. Say something about spouse, my wife, your spouse, your wife. First of all, your wife is going to be a very hot headed person, very confident and egoistic. She's going to kind of like take over you, she's going to be in charge of you. And the reason why I say hot-headed, because two hot planets, two of the hottest planets, Jupiter and Mars, are conjunct together in Mer with Mercury, which also shows me she'll have a very clever tongue. She'll have a very um, aggressive speech style. She will say what she wants, when she wants. And at the same time, she'll be highly sexual, so that's a positive for you, due to Venus's position. But at the same time, what I see is that she might be... Um, she might be in a uh, medical field. You might find her who, uh, in a medical field, perhaps in a higher institution, perhaps in your university, college, you know, type setting or library type setting, or you might meet her at some religious or spiritual setting. Okay. Next one is from um, Malik, Malik Kool, Malik Kool. Okay, so what if 7th Lord Mars is in its own house with Sun closely around 5 degrees? Will you prediction remain the same? Okay, that, well, just like the other one. Um, like I said, Mars and Sun are very hot planets. So it produces a very egoistic interaction with the spouse. There will be power struggles with the spouse. There will be really head-butting with the spouse. That, but there, at, at the same time, there's a lot of passion with the spouse. However, just don't let the spouse take over you. Your spouse will be like, Okay, let's keep the show rolling. Alicia Khanna. 
The question which can be answered by you, as you mentioned on your Facebook, my question is that Ketu as planet in my Lagna with Leo Ascendant, it's Mahadasha along with Antradasha of Rahu till July 2014, can give marriage or because they are malefic. The thumb rule of Antradasha of the 7th house can help will not apply. Well, here's the thing. This is a very good question. First of all, you're running through Ketu Mahadasha. What is Ketu supposed to do in its Mahadasha? And I've discussed this on my channel. Ketu is a planet of detachment. Ketu is a planet of sorcery. Ketu is a planet of meditation, yoga, spirituality. So when you present something which is as institutionalized as a marriage, Sure, Ketu will say, go ahead, get married. Ketu's not going to stop you. But Ketu will say, well, guess what? I have to do my job. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. My job is to teach you a karmic lesson of letting go of things and detaching from things. So what will happen in this time period in Rahu Ketu? Rahu will say, here, let's get attached to something. Let's get attached to other people. I'll bring you the most amazing person ever. Okay. But then Ketu is saying, enjoy that amazing person for a limited time because you know what? I'm going to make you detach from them. And usually with the same kind of settings, what I've seen is that after marriage, the person suddenly lost interest in who they married and they ended up getting a divorce. So it is always best to ignore the Ketu Mahadasha unless, of course, if Ketu is in a nakshatra of Venus and Venus is well placed in its multricone sign or exalted at its degree and in Nemansha, your seventh house has all the positive aspects and including the fact that if Jupiter is looking at your ascendant or Jupiter looking at your seventh house, that's an additional blessing. In that case, I'll be like, okay, then I'll do my assessment of all the things all the divisional charts and I'll be like, okay, this is a good time for you to get married. This is okay. You will get a very spiritual partner because remember aspect and conjunction always mold and change a planet, but it's highly recommended that it's better to get married in a planet in a, in a time period of planets who signify marriage, who say, okay to marriage, who say, yes, let's get married. But remember, in your case, Rahu is holding the Mult is a co-ruler of the sign Aquarius, the Multricon sign. That means he will not do as much damage. So if you have these positive aspects influencing your seventh house, especially in this time period, yes, it's, it's it could be a good time. But if you have Saturn looking at it, Mars looking at the seventh house, and then you're going through Rahu Ketu time period without any influence of Jupiter, I would say no, don't get married. Okay. So the next one is um, from Niku Belisa. How can Ascendant Lord Madasha be one of the best if it only represents body and character of a person? No, 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 no. Ascendant Lord Madasha, why it can be good, besides the fact that you need to see if it's well placed, it's not debilitated or anything, is that first house is a life force of your entire chart. Your first house, your body, your mind, your brain, which is the first house, decides how it's going to deal with each aspect. Without the first house, you don't have you. So the first house triggers all the aspect of your entire life. All the houses get activated here. And if the first house is well placed, that means the body will receive the maximum nourishment, maximum peace, maximum happiness. So if the fourth, first Lord is placed in a good house, in a good sign, you will reap the benefits of your first house through those things. So if your uh, first house is in the fourth house, well placed, in its Mahadasha, your body, your mind, your brain, your soul will experience happiness in the home, purchase of a new home, new vehicle, conveniences. So you see how this works. Okay, uh, Vensaki Rao, does 
Uh, does this apply to Rahu and Ketu, your Vargotama video? Of course, absolutely. If Rahu is in Leo in the uh, uh, birth chart and it's in Leo in Nemancha chart, or if uh, Rahu is in uh, Aries and then also in Aries in Nemancha chart, it's a Vargotama Rahu because Rahu also has a job to do. And remember, I made a video. Rahu Ketu position in the divinal chart. So you see how their position kind of molds your this life's goal and past life mastery. Okay. Okay, Janya Elizabeth. Someone else asked, but I'm wondering as well, as I'm going to ask you too, how does Saturn become exalted? Saturn becomes exalted in the sign of Libra, especially between 17 to 22 degrees. Saturn is very ex much exalted. So there are certain signs uh, uh, in a zodiac belt where certain planet becomes exalted like sun in Aries is exalted Venus in Pisces is exalted Jupiter in Cancer is exalted Mars in Capricorn is exalted so there's these exaltation debilitation point which obviously I discuss in my books and videos as well so okay so the next one is from uh, Lentzner Jr. how would effect of a benefic malefic aspect help does Mars plus Jupiter aspect on Venus also show abuse and does it need to be sexual only? No. Here's the thing. Abuse of Venus has to be not just by aspect, but by its sign placement, house placement, and nakshatra placement. So let's say Venus is sitting in the 8th house in the sign of Scorpio. And it's sitting in a nakshatra of Saturn, while Mars and Jupiter are looking at it from a different, um, well, they can't look at it unless they're looking at it both in the same angle, you know, so you have to see a lot of these things where, yeah, it can show a sexual abuse by a guru, like people go and little kids go and learn from their teacher here, just they just had a case in El Monte Elementary School in, U in US in Los Angeles, where I think I don't know what elementary school it is, but it's the uh, LA Unified School District where these two sexual molesters were molesting kids in a class. So sexual abuse by guru, by a teacher, that can happen. Okay, but you have to closely pay attention. Now, is there a specific, um, specific combination for this? No. It's it's when it comes to these things, if you do not have intuition with astrology. You cannot predict it. It's very hard. You have to have intuition. Astrology and learning astrology is simply breaking a code. And half of that code breaking comes from intuition. So all of these things are involved. This is why I can never say I'm 100% astrology. I'm not, man, if, even if I get to like 65, 70% of astrological knowledge, I would consider myself blessed because it's such a vast ocean. You will keep learning for seven lives. As Parashra said, you will learn for seven lives and only then you will know even 80% of astrology. Next one is from Sprinkle of Hawaii. I was wondering if there's any more secret tips you can give us like the wearing expensive things versus cheap things. Big chair, but buying used things anymore. Oh yeah, definitely, man. Like just these lights that I got. I got these two LED lights. They're like $400 a piece. And when I knew the kind of setting I wanted, I could have had alternative things. I was going with a very cheap thing early on, four or five months ago. And I'm like, let me just do it now. But I'm like, no. I want to be able to walk into a store and buy the light that I really, really need for this setting. And that's when I'll do it. So I waited and I got this uh, name brand light that I wanted. Same thing, like a watch. This is like this watch. This is my dream watch that I always wanted. And I saw this first time back like in 2008 in a Stevie McQueen's ad. This is a Tag Heuer Monaco. It, 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12. It took me five years to finally get it. But I never wanted a fake. There are replicas, these replica watches online. You can buy them for like a hundred bucks. This one, I got the original as is. 
because I kept saving. I'm like, I want this watch. Yeah, it took me five years to save just to get this watch, but I got it because that's something I wanted. Because when I wear it and it's, it's, it is the thing that I wanted, I feel good about it. I feel different because, you know, I love watches. And so this was like my, I, if you gave me a Rolex versus this Tag Heuer Monaco of Stevie McQueen's watch, I would pick this any day of the week, twice on Sunday. Because I love it. This is something that is very cool and unique and it represents a lot to me. But I didn't sell it for anything cheap. I did not settle for those $100 replica that were exactly like this. And I could have been, I get it. And I've done that. And once I did that, I'm like, oh my God, I just don't feel good. The energy of the product it does not mesmerize you. When I put this on my hand the first time, I just fell in love. I just knew this is me. And that's what I did. So anytime you buy something that that is the actual thing and not cheapen yourself out, even if it takes you five years, you build that energy with you. Then you get bigger. Then you get battered. Then you want even the higher things. Okay. So, yeah, never settle for cheap, you know. Always go for the, the the best that you can afford. I waited a long time to get this chair. As you know, when I in my older videos, I had this brown chair for $60 that I got from, uh, I think, office. And so, as I was saying, I always wanted an executive chair. And I heard this from a very well, you know, feng shui expert, like, you want, if you want to take control of your life, be the boss of your life. You want to work for yourself. You want to make your own money, support your own life. Be the boss who pays you the money. So she says having a chair like this, a very nice chair that you will feel like an executive will, will start to give you a different mentality. And yes, it did that. I loved this red chair that I saw. And I'm like, okay, how do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do this? Slowly, slowly, I kept saving money in the bank. And then eventually when I had the money and I'm like, okay, I can afford this now. I got it. So you have, you don't be like going in debt. Okay, get the watch, get the chair, get the lights, get this. Because then that's negative, negative uh, life living. That's, that's negative wealthy. You want to get it with your own money that you made made for yourself and you want to get it slowly and steadily okay because remember slow and steady wins the race so i will make a video actually again but if you haven't i have already made a video on um i, I think it's called seven step to a uh fun being a financially uh independent you know so i just yeah i i i follow what my heart says i follow the the right steps and i follow the highest quality of steps that's the key here okay so we're coming down to the y error actually wow that was um yeah that's it that was it um because i know my battery's gonna run out soon so yeah guys this was my uh q a show back hope you enjoyed it more to come as always, if you do not know where your planet replacements are and you want to know exactly what's happening in your horoscope for that, check out the links right there and check out my books, Astrology, Conjunction and Aspects of the Speed of Flight. And we'll see you next week with 7th Lord in the 11th house. Yep. I give you quality, honey, so put your money on me. With my authority, surely you want to get up on it. I give you quality, honey, so put your money on me. With my authority, surely you want to get up on it. I'm super fly with the rhymes I supply. Float like a butterfly high up in the sky. Stink like a bee before I touch the ground. Like Ali in his prime. Yeah, I'm loud, I'm proud. So you can understand the words that coming out my mouth. When I'm in the house, I keep it hot and tight. I ain't stressing, I'm not